Bonuses for new Sioux City school workers. So you have paraeducators, food service workers, bus drivers. They can get up to $1,000 if they go to work there. New teachers can get up to $5,000, always to try to help with this widespread worker shortage. Now, you'll remember Iowa's governor gave $1,000 from that federal COVID-19 emergency aid money. That went to teachers who agreed to teach next year. She did not give it to other school employees. I think most of ours is gone doing what we did, but not only did the state get ESSER funds, each one of the school districts did as well. And uh, they're sitting on about 700 to 800 so million dollars that. and they can use those funds for the same thing. And so even some school districts are even on top of the bonus that we are giving to teachers, they're doing uh, teachers, so an additional bonus. But if we're giving a bonus to the teachers, then maybe they could take their ESSER funds and do some of the support staff with that. And we would encourage them to do that. Uh, you have an easy focus group when it comes to education because you can talk to your daughter, the teacher. <laughs> yeah. And does she give you any advice or anything? You know, obviously we have a teacher shortage, one yeah. of many industries in our state where yeah. we're short here. What do we as a state, what do you as an administration need to do to kind of grow more teachers mm -hmm. and keep more teachers? I'm curious if your daughter gives you any advice on that. Well, yes, yeah, you know, she's not afraid to tell me if things are working or not. You know, a lot of it is just, you know, um, our kids have been through a lot in the last two years and we're seeing a lot of um, disruptive behavior. We were already seeing some of that before COVID-19 and it's escalated a little bit. So I think, you know, you see teachers that are burnt out uh, from that and just tr instead of being able to teach, they're dealing with a lot of other issues in the classroom. That's part of it. Uh, what we did that I'm really excited about, it's not it's not the end all be all, but it really is a great idea for the pipeline and I'm really proud uh, we led on that and that came from uh, a group of uh, individuals here in the state of Iowa and that's the teacher registered apprenticeship program where paraeducators can be paid to not only continue working but to finish and get their teaching license license and then uh, high school kids that are thinking about going into education can start that process while they're in school and they'll get paid uh, being a paraeducator in the classroom, get that certification, and then go on and get their teaching license. And in both instances, uh, they don't pay any tuition for that. And we have, Dave, we've seen just a ton of interest in that. We're probably going to, it's a pilot program, and I won't be surprised if we need to figure out a way to put additional funding into that because we've seen so much interest, both rural and urban. It's been interesting to see our rural school districts kind of work together to figure out ways to do that. But the other piece of that is because we're paying the paraeducator that's already on staff in that school district, that'll free up half of it. That'll free up some money for that school district to bring in even additional paraeducators, uh, you know, paras as well. So um, we'll, it'll be anxious to see how that plays out and where we end up with numbers and how many schools actually take advantage of that. But there's a ton of interest right now, so I'm really excited about that. You have Democrats who wanted to see more investment in schools. You all ended up settling on 2.5% uh, per pupil funding plus the, the leftover money that you mentioned uh, that came with the federal aid that schools can use. Kind of more broadly, if you have Democrats believing it's going to take more money to make our schools better and you all saying here's what here's what we want to invest in that how do you see our schools getting better without maybe throwing a additional money yeah i don't think it? money's the answer what is enough when is enough ever enough if you look at some of the other schools there's a survey that's out we're about the middle of pack for what we're investing in education and i don't think you know that's necessarily reflective of what needs to be done in education and you know every year we've increased funding in k-12 education it's just you know, it's the same old tired talking points that they use every year. And, you know, it, I don't care how much money you put into education, if we're not preparing our kids for the future, then we're failing. And we need to just rethink education. And that's why I think competition is ultimately the answer. Um, I don't think that that's gonna, um, you know, collapse our public school system because that is the foundation of our educational system. I've always said that it is critical that we have a strong public education system, and we do. But, you know, it's not going to hurt them to give parents the choice to decide what is in the best interest for their, child, for their children. And it shouldn't just be um, families that have enough resources to have those options. That's so unfair to middle and lower income families that feel that their child could do 
thrive better in a different environment. To say I'm sorry you don't make enough money is just completely, I just don't fundamentally don't, don't agree with that. How are you going to win over those rural legislators who've been hesitant to sign on to this? Because for them, in some cases, it's not like living in the Des Moines metro yeah. where you can have some private school yeah. options. Some of them, it's a it's a hike to get to a school. Yeah, well, and so just showing them, showing them that. And, you know, they have a goal, good school system. So it's not a concern, but like we do, you know, in many pieces of legislation that we pass, you have to look at the state as a whole. And there are a lot of uh, families that truly want that option. COVID really gave us kind of an insight into what's happening in some of our schools. And so um, I think parents are engaged. I think they do believe that it's the right thing to do. And I think you're going to continue to see polling demonstrate that. They're going to feel comfortable in saying, yeah, it's okay. it's okay to give parents the choice. I'm happy with the school district that I'm sending my kids to. I'm blessed, but I know there are parents out there that don't have it. Uh, as good as I do, and I believe that they should they should have the choice. I don't think it should be some bureaucrat that's deciding uh, what's in the best interest of my child. Governor's back a little bit later for the quick six, talking about that phone call she got that let her know that she would give that big speech to millions of people. But first, why Congresswoman Axney says she wants a new plan in D.C.